Hello, Lil Kana. Lil Kana. Lil Kana. Evening, Lil Kana. Lil Kana in the building. From BFG to HGU, Lil Kana has taken us on an unforgettable journey of vulnerability, raw emotion, and self growth. With the release of his third studio album, Hugo, this chapter comes to a close as he completes the arc of his personal journey. We're diving into the incredible world of an artist who's not only connected with people globally through powerful storytelling, but also redefined the landscape of British hip hop. Welcome back to Who the F is the show, deep diving into some of your favorite bands, new and old. In today's video, we're looking at the brilliant Laura Kana. Laura Kana's been on my radar since probably 2017. I've been a big fan of his. I think he's absolutely great. And I've never seen him live. That's going to change this year. He's due to play Reading and Leeds festivals, of which I'm attending, and I'm very excited to see. He's a very thought-provoking artist. Super introspective and really, really interesting. I love his sound. I love his lyrical content. I love his ability to tell stories. He seems like a really genuine guy. He's the whole thing, which is absolutely great. So without further ado, if you've never heard of him before, hopefully this video will help answer the question, who the f is Loyal Khan? It was all that you could be if you were black, make it ball or maybe rap, and they would say it like a fact. Born Benjamin Gerald Coyle Lana, Loyal Kana is a prominent English hip-hop musician from South Croydon. His unique stage name is a spoonerism of his surname and pays homage to his childhood struggles with ADHD and dyslexia. He began his music career supporting various rappers on tour with the likes of Atmosphere, K Tempest and the legendary MF Doom. His music is known for his introspective, confessional and honest lyrics which deal with personal experiences, emotions and family relationships, something he articulates from the get-go in his first record. BFG with the line Everybody says I'm fucking sad Of course I'm fucking sad, I miss my fucking dad Of course I'm fucking sad I miss my fucking dad Which, fun fact, is a record samples Lauren's favourite song of all time Baby by Donnie and Joe Emerson He followed this up with the double A side. My favourite of the two is the incredible Florence with longtime collaborator Quez. The record builds on Kana's theme of family with an opening uh, lyric. She could be my little freckle face fidgeter. Me but miniature. Sleeping on the sofa till she tackles and I tickle her. Later in 2019, he released the Immaculate Ain't Nothing Changed, a record that beautifully articulates the struggle of growing up in a challenging environment and discusses the impact of how financial struggles affect your mental well being. Both of these singles would go on to feature on his debut record Yesterday's Gone, which was released in January 2017. The record has received incredibly well critically, scoring 84 on Metacritic. The Independent went on to give it album of the year and the line of best fit gave it 8.5 out of 10 saying it's not an exaggeration to claim that it is one of the most honest soulful and inspiring debut british rap albums since roots maneuvers brand new second hand from 1999 the album also earned a nomination on the prestigious mercury prize in april alongside blossoms glass animals ed sheeran stormzy and the xx and of course winner samfa and it's a banger of an album it also features the two standouts for me album opener the isles of aaron as well as his first collaboration with the brilliant Tom Mish on the record Damselfly. For fuck's sake, I know oh. that these days he subsequently took the record on tour, playing dates across the UK, Europe and America, as well as Australia. Wait, where did he play in Brisbane? The Woolly Mammoth? I don't think it's a venue anymore. It was a craft beer bar at one point, but... I guess that's probably been replaced in the family, right? In February 2018, he jumped on Tom Mish's album as a featured artist on the outstanding Water Baby. It's one of my favourite tunes. He followed up in early 2018 with the incredible Ottolenghi, a record named after the brilliant Yotam Ottolenghi and his already born British chef, restaurateur and food writer. It tells the story of him reading Ottolenghi's book Jerusalem on the train and some lads died questioning him about it, mistaking the book for a Bible, pushing a narrative about the ongoing troubles in Israel and Palestine. Uh, they ask about the Bible I was reading, told them that the title was misleading, labelled it Jerusalem. It's a beautiful record about finding solace in the kind of quiet parts of life like cooking and sharing a meal with a loved one. This would go on to be the first single taken from his upcoming sophomore record and was succeeded by the second single, You Don't Know. You don't know what I'm looking for. And third single, Loose Ends, marking his first time collaborating with the enigmatic Georgia Smith. 
He released his second studio album, Not Waving But Drowning, on the 19th of April 2019. The album's title was inspired by British poet Stevie Smith's poem of the same name. It will also went on to receive relative critical acclaim, scoring 70 on Metacritic. The line of Best Fit again loved the album, scoring it 9 out of 10, saying, While the somber tones of these 15 tracks may result in some listeners skipping through it, searching for something energetic, what lies at the end of the record, for those of patience, is a truly beautiful collection of stories built through pensive soliloquy as a means to exploring abrasive subjects. The album featured the two previously mentioned singles, as well as another feature with Tom Mish in Angel and the incredible feature with Samfer, Desilai. Spending time, spending time. As a man who's dyslexic, he sure likes to use hard-to-read words as song titles. Not too many favours here, Mr. Carner. In November 2020, he collaborated with legendary producer Madlib on the standalone single Yesterday, one of his more brush-sounding records. It has the grandiosity of a Hollywood film and feels like it belongs in something made by Quentin Tarantino. It feels like... It was only yesterday. I back when I thought I'd never touched a mother land. I because my and then in July 2022, after two years of no new music, he put out what I can only describe as his best record to date, the incredibly cathartic hate. My grandfather told me never trust in them, but I do. You're the ones I shouldn't chew, I start with them, this is it. Still, I see men hit women. The music video for the track shows Karna driving his dad's car as he battles with different versions of himself until the car is completely engulfed with different emotions. This was the first single taken from his third studio album. The second single was the brilliant Georgetown, a record that makes heavy use of the sample of George Arvid's poem Half Cast, a poem about the struggles of being mixed race. John also features in the music video. Yeah, I'm black like the key on the piano. Such a belter. In October 2022, he released his third studio album, Hugo, which centered on the theme of forgiveness and explored his relationship and reconnection with his absent father. Hugo's album title is a tribute to his father's car, where they had the initial conversations that led to the development of a deeper understanding and forgiveness between them. It's been really nice to be able to talk about my dad's car. It's made me feel... I don't know, even more believing in it being the right name for the album. Hugo is the name of my dad's car and the album wouldn't have existed without without my dad's car and without the lessons because it wasn't even about the driving lessons. It was just the catalyst for conversation and being in a car, you're not like looking at each other, right? So like, if I'm in the car and my dad's in the car, I'm saying like, yo, you really let me down. But I don't have to watch that land and, mm -hmm. and hit him and hurt him. You know what I mean? So I'm able to speak free and then he's able to kind of be more honest because neither of us are confronting each other. Mm which allowed for these conversations. And that's just, that was the whole idea of the album. But yeah, that's why it's called Hugo, because it's my dad's car. The album was widely received as a success, scoring 87 on Metacritic. Again, the line of Best Fit gave it 9 out of 10, saying, a clear-cut statement on what it feels like to be alive in these troubling times, from an artist who's carefully cementing himself as one of the most compelling and earnest young talents. The record features the three previous singles, as well as the album's standout and live staple, HGU. Yeah, yo, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. And I hold it, it continue after everything you've been through. Living a life that was sinful, slicing through my belly like a ginsu, the birthday cake I bring you. A record born into the world after he was searching for low kind of type beats on YouTube. But yeah, because I remember Hugo said to me like, you should go on, you should go on YouTube and search low kind of type beat. And so yeah, I did. I was on the toilet of all places. But I remember, I remember just writing to it, like listening to the beat and going, this one's actually alright. Probably also mentioned that HGU was on your dad's license plate as well. Yeah, it's literally spelled out there for us. In an interview with The Enemy at the Brit Awards earlier this year, he announced that he has gone back into the studio and is working on more new music. And this may be a cheat question, yes. given that Hugo's only just come out, are yeah, you yeah. thinking about new music at all? Yeah, I was in the studio yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I, for the first time ever, I never used to really, when I finished my album, I'd be like, cool, job done, I'm gonna chill on that for a little bit, but this time, I, I, for some reason, I had the desire to get straight back in, so I got straight back in and I've been working on new music. Al album four? I don't know what it will be, but you know, it feels nice. I guess for the first time, I'm really doing it for myself and not for anything else, so. They all come out. Look, I'm so excited to see Laura Connor. He was due to play Reading and Leeds last year. Uh, sorry, no, he did. He did a secret set at Reading and Leeds last year, and we couldn't get anywhere near. In fact, I've got a clip of it. No! So I'm really excited to finally see him play. He would have been a really great enemy stage headliner if the enemy stage just did a thing. So I'm kind of excited to see him sub headline, but I would have loved to have seen him in the tent. Anyway, that's my thoughts. I think he's absolutely brilliant. What do you think? Have you seen him perform before? Are you looking forward to seeing him play later this year? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section as always. And I will, of course, see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.